Hi everyone, welcome back to my plant channel. My name is Dana and today I'm going to be talking about my Hoya collection. Now I've done a couple of specific plant collection videos in the past and obviously I do not have the largest collection, but you know I have some more uncommon ones I think. I don't really know. <laughs> At least here where I live it's super hard to find any like type of Hoya. Um, but anyways. <laughs> Without further ado, I'll get into the video and I'll just tell you some things about my plants. <laughs> but yeah, so starting off, this is my Hoya Crimson Princess. It was the first ever Hoya that I got and I was so pumped because I wanted a Hoya for so long, but like I said, really hard to find, so I couldn't find any anywhere. And finally, I did and it didn't grow for like the first year and then it finally started putting out growth and it got mealybugs. <laughs> and so when we moved, I had already chopped it up and before chopping, like I mean, before putting it in my propagation box, I had it all washed off very well so I knew there weren't any more mealybugs. And this is literally a more full and bigger plant than it was when I chopped it up. So within a shorter span of time, it and being mauled by me chopping it, it's grown much more full and much more luscious and it just looks so much nicer than when it did when I first had it. So I have zero regrets on chopping it. This is just a Hoya Carnosa, just regular green Hoya cutting. And I took it from my Crimson Princess because a lot of it had been reverted and I was just like, well, you know, I'll start a Hoya Carnosa. It was one leaf, so it already put out a new leaf for me, which is very cool. I'm happy about that. But I just have it in this like plastic cup because I started it in water and now I'm transitioning it to soil before I pot it. Um, that's something I just started doing. I think I made a video about it. So if you want to learn more about the process, go check it out. Um, my Hoya Crimson Queen. And I had a Hoya Crimson Queen before this one, but I accidentally overwatered it because when I first got it, like it needed water, so I watered it, but it also had wrinkly leaves. So I assumed whenever its leaves wrinkled, it was because I, it wanted more water. So I was watering it like every other day. I'm like, man, this plant is so thirsty. Only to find out, oh, its leaves also wrinkle when it gets too much water and then it dies. So that was like a couple of years ago I learned I now know that you squish the leaves and wait until they're soft before you water it and it makes a lot more sense now so I'd rather let my plant dry out a lot and you know make sure that it actually needs water that's a pro tip for me to you um, but yeah so I got myself a new one I was so bummed out because my first one was really pretty but this one has grown so much already since I got it. All of this is new growth. This is still pink, so it's new growth. It's putting out a new shoot full of new growth, and then this is new growth. One of the leaves got damaged though. I accidentally bent it, but it's still there. It's fine. Plants aren't perfect, so I'm, I'm chilling. I can't wait until I have a full pot of this and it starts hanging. This one's on the verge of starting to hang. It's not heavy enough yet. It's a really sturdy stem that it's on but it is so pretty and oh my goodness out of the princess and the queen i i don't know who to choose when their new growth is coming in because this one has like a light blushy blush pink and then it turns to like this beautiful like i love the outside like variegation as opposed to the inside variegation so in general i like this plant more but the crimson princess when it puts out new growth it's like striking pink it's like bright pink and that is so pretty so I don't know they're both very pretty <laughs> next up is my Hoya Wyetii the unvariegated version I would like to get the variegated version because I think it would look so pretty if I stressed it in my cool light <laughs> anyways so yes this is my Hoya Wyetii it is looking good it I thought I saw a couple of mealybugs yeah there's a couple of mealybugs on here I've been spraying it in all the plants that live around it with like bug killer so I'm gonna spray it again because I'm not uh, there's no way I'm doing the thing where you take it all out of the ground wash off all the roots wash off the plant like I'm sorry that's just not happening some of the white dots on here are from fertilizer I put one like the slow release fertilizer on top of it 
Um, so, it's actually not that bad. There's only one melee bug that I'm seeing, and I've been using neem oil and, like, actual bug killer, like I said. So, it's still growing, it's doing well, none of the leaves are damaged or anything, but I love the new growth and how it's, like, almost black. So pretty. It's such a pretty plant, and I'm very glad that I got it, and, oh my goodness, I don't see why more people, like, I don't understand why people don't have this plant, I guess. Because, yeah, I know people just love to have plants that can't keep themselves alive with the variegation. Don't get me wrong, I'm one of those people. Variegation is gorgeous, it's beautiful. But at the same time, there's nothing like a gorgeous, like, dark green leaf. Like, is that not stunning? And it's super cheap, too, so, I mean, I don't know. I love it. Next up is my Hoya Chelsea, and it has put out one new leaf since I got it about eight, seven months ago. Um, I basically made a mistake where I rooted it in sphagnum, and it had good roots, but then I potted it into big of a pot, and it just wasn't getting enough water, and its roots were really sad, so I took it out, rerooted it in water, and then it put out a new leaf while I was rerooting it in water. And now I have it transitioning in this cup, and I think it's going to be in here for a while because Hoya don't have very big root systems from my experience, but I'll keep an eye on it. I just watered it today. These are kind of hard to tell when they need water. This one is the worst at communicating with me when it needs to be watered, so I kind of just guess. I water it with the Hoya Carnosa that's also in the cup, <laughs> but yeah. Now here is my favorite. Hoya. My Hoya Pubicalix Splash. I cannot express the deep love I have for this flat. As soon as I got it, it just grew and grew and grew and grew. A lot of the leaves are damaged because it had rips, I think, at some point. Or mealybugs, I'm not sure. It had something. And I was like, alright, no, I'm saving this bad boy. I took him into the shower and I showered off all of his roots, no dirt was left, and then I had him in a water vessel for a little while, and then I potted him in here. And he has since put out a lot of new growth. He still has some of his old leaves before the incident, and as they start getting older and they put out more leaves to cover the old leaves, I kind of plucked a few away already, and I'm probably going to pluck more away, just because he's since recovered very nicely and he looks very nice and he's very pretty and I love him and oh my goodness he's precious to me so I don't know what else to tell you other than Hoya Pubicalix Splash is a king and he went through the ringer for me and survived just fine but yeah so this is all of my Hoya collection like I said it's nothing crazy but I'm proud of what I have so yeah thank you for watching today's video and liking and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!